So Activision just released their earnings a couple of days ago, and the stock really hasn't done much. I mean, we're, we've really just been sitting basically between this range of about $80 and $76 since we heard that news that Microsoft was going to potentially acquire the company. And I'm just going to say this before we get into this video. I think the only way that I would ever invest in Activision is under the pretenses that I plan for Microsoft to purchase this company. The company is not growing. I don't really like the way that they're being ran i don't really like the product and i'm not here just crap on activision i, I do want to kind of give it an unbiased review uh, but it's not 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 the best just gonna be honest here um so earnings really wasn't that good um you know gap revenues down 28 percent due to the knock-on effect of weak sales and user retention of call of duty I could talk all day about how a video game should be created and really how the best video games are created without, you know, uh, companies like, like, you know, being a public company. I think one of the issues is when you have a company go public or a company that is public acquire a game development company that their only job is game development, not a company like Microsoft where like most of it is not developing games uh when it's only developing games like you have to constantly be putting growth up um every single quarter that's just what you know the might like that's <laughs> that's just what the market wants to see and that's what a lot of these executives want to see as well and you just can't do that when it comes to game development game development takes years and years and years if you look at something like let's just use uh, a game that i play a lot which is overwatch if you look at overwatch that game took six years, seven years to create, and it's still one of the best video games out there and best sellers still making them a ton of money six, seven years later. That came out in 2016, it's 2022, and they've been developing Overwatch 2, I think, for like five years now. So that's how it should be, but it's not really the best in a you know being a public company because that's not what investors and analysts are looking for. They don't want to hear like, oh, we're developing a great game. They want to see what are sales and how are we growing. Uh, but a lot of this is dependent really on the acquisition from Microsoft, in my opinion. And it seems like it's not going to happen until the first half of 2023 if that happens. So a lot of fair value for a lot of uh, analysts is right around 92. We're trading under 80, which gives us a 13% discount. Not enough for me to even look to purchase this uh, at this point. But if we go through and just look at some key metrics here, market cap 61 billion, net income is 2 billion, revenue is 8 billion, PE is 25, a PE 25 is not bad, but still five year PE is 36, it's not the best. Um, taking a look at our income sheet and our balance, uh, you can see that if we just look at the past five years, this is the first thing I wanna do, just go over the past five years, you're going to see 2018, 4.6 billion gross profit, 2019, 4.94 billion gross profit. And let's just do actually operating revenue first. This would just be a little bit easier. So $7 billion, uh, 7.26, 7 7.36. So very small, um, operating revenue of 2020 is 6.45. So revenue dropped by about a billion dollars. Then we had a good tick up in 2021, 6.45 to 8.57. And then 2022, 8.30. Um, so slowing growth, we saw some good growth from 2020 to 2021. And that's kind of what you will see with some of these video game companies, because let's just take let's just say it takes like six years for a company to release a game and that game is like a home run. Well, that game might make a ton of money for four or five, six years. And then they won't have a lot, you know, uh, if there's not a lot of stuff in the pipeline for a couple of years, but I want to look at net income because this is one of the more important things. Net income is looking pretty decent here as well. I don't know why this thing makes the lines so big. There we go. Net income, 346 million in 2018, massive jump in net income up to 1.8. Then 2020, 1.5, 2021, 2.3, and then 2.47. So growth in net income, which is good, uh, you know, a little bit of growth this year, but still uh, nothing too crazy. Looking at the balance sheet, total assets, total, total liabilities is not bad. $25 billion total assets, total liabilities is $7 billion, so they can cut a check tomorrow, pay all of that off. Looking at um, the shares outstanding 4.1%, not bad. I mean, there's a little bit of, uh, dilution, but it's nothing insane, right? It's not like they're totally killing you there. Five year PE is 36. That's not good. Um, and let's look at the stock analyzer. So this is a, a tool that I use from everything money when I'm analyzing something quickly. I think it's really good for a lot of people. I'm in no affiliation with these guys at all. I don't really watch their YouTube videos or anything, but I do really like their software. Um, when projecting, 
and analyzing something like Activision, it's just, it's hard because you're really banking on the company being bought out, in my opinion. Like, I'm not investing in Activision and I'm not, I'm not, not at all. I'm just going to like spill the beans now. I'm not at all. I wouldn't even think about buying this company unless it got cut like by 75%. Um, but I think you're only buying it and I hope that they get acquired. If they don't get acquired, I think it's going to get bloody. 10 year revenue growth, revenue growth is 5.8. Let's just call it 6%. Uh, that's 10 year, five years, 3.4. One year is a loss, so they, they actually didn't grow at all. They they actually shrunk revenue. Um, profit margin past 10 years, 21%, 22%, 29% in the past one year. Free cash flow margins, 27, 26, 25. So that's held steady. And then PE is 24. Uh, and then price to, um, to uh, free cash flow is 29. So putting all this in, putting all these assumptions in here, and then analyzing, if you think that this is going to happen, right? This I think this is pretty hard. They have to grow at 5% revenue, which they actually didn't grow at all last year. And over the past five years, they've averaged three. Profit margins have to basically stay the same. Free cash flow has to stay the same. PE has to stay the same. And to me, still, I wouldn't buy it unless it's at 43 bucks based off of those numbers. And we're trading at 80. So... That's best case scenario. I'm not even going to talk about because you guys will probably get mad, but uh, I'm not even going to talk about if you think the middle assumptions are correct, because if that's the case, then we're looking at 24. It's a pass. It's a hard pass for me, but I wanted to do this video to kind of just give you guys an update what I thought. Um, this was once a company like five years ago that I wanted to own for the long term and I just don't feel that way right now. I really don't I think there's better places to put your money. Thanks for all the support guys. Have a good day. Peace.